In this Stories from the Strong Room, we discuss the origins and history of Bransome Castle, using sources held at the Hull History Centre. It is by no way meant to be an authoritative or exhaustive talk on Bransome Castle. Early references to a castle and its reputed builders lack any written record, but using the available sources held at the History Centre, hypotheses are put forward as to its foundation and construction. Details on the landscape offer an insight into the area while we also explore the wider context of the period. Take a walk along the Hull Hornsey railway line and you come to Holden Drain, about half a mile or so from the village of Sutton on Hull. To your left across the drain, described as a hillock or prehistoric mound, lies what is to believe the site of Bransome Castle. Nothing remains other than an oval shape with a series of mounds and what appears to be the outline of a Mottam Bailey style earthwork. Other than this, you would not know this was perhaps once home to a castle. We cannot be 100% certain this is indeed the site of Bransome Castle. However, given the fact that no other plausible or visible site exists, and the fact that the site is indeed called Castle Hill, implies this is the probable site of Bransome Castle. But what do the historical records tell us? In 1919, the then curator of Hull Museums, Thomas Shepherd, undertook a dig at the well-known earthwork at Swine known as Castle Hill. He, together with soldiers from the nearby garrison at Sutton on Hull, dug a trench through its mound. Although excavations for gravel had, at different times, defaced the area, Shepherd found evidence of a small square brick building which he dated as Elizabethan, while the mound, according to Shepherd, had evidence of being presumably medieval. Large quantities of small fragmented pottery were also found, including handles from vessels dating from the 14th and 15th centuries, together with bones from domestic animals. Today, Shepherd's work remains our best source of information about this site in terms of its archaeology. In his book Sutton in Holdness, Blasthill argues the site was useless for defence in the Middle Ages, but this conclusion may be derived as Say II, Lord of Sutton, refers to his capital dwelling at Sutton, enclosed with a ditch under his garden wall in one acre of land. Blasthill suggests this may have actually been at Stone Ferry, which was then a part of Sutton. Blasthill does, however, mention that on his return from expedition in the north in 1322, Edward II made a brief visit to Holdness in October. On the 17th of October, his privy seal was affixed to a document relating to the wardship of one of his castles at Sutton. At the time, Branzone was attached to the parish of Sutton. Could this, and say his reference to his residence, actually be that of Branzone Castle? We do know from Shepherd's excavations that Castle Hill had been inhabited during the Middle Ages, and possibly earlier by the Romans. To further back up the theory that Castle Hill is indeed the site of Branzome Castle, one obvious piece of evidence is available, its name. Castle Hill, as with many places, don't acquire names for no reason. Branzome itself is no made-up name, its name goes back at least a millennia. In fact, look all around the area, and many names have an historical meaning. Today, Robank Arcade is home to a small number of shops on the Branzome estate. The name Robank, however, is a very old name itself, predating the development of the Branzome estate, and refers to a bank at Soffham Farm, which once occupied the area. Another indication of a castle on the site may be similar to that at Albre, close to the Holdner's coast. It is believed that a castle was once located at Albre, on a site that takes its name Castle Hill. Added to this, John Grundy's drainage scheme of 1764 shows a dwelling of some sort at Castle Hill, probably the Elizabethan building found by Thomas Shepherd and referred to as the Mansion House. To further indicate Castle Hill as the site of Bransome Castle, we can look at the history of the land. The area encompassing the site of Bransome Castle, along with large swathes of Holdness, had for much of its history been marsh or swamp with slow-moving watercourses, along with dozens of mears. Almost all these mears have now gone, the only one remaining is that at Hornsey or Hornsey Mere. In the Middle Ages, the castle at Skipsey was protected by a great mere with access to the North Sea. Withensey too had a mere, but like the mere at Skipsey, this has long since disappeared. Prior to modern development, the view looking north and eastwards from Sutton towards Bransome Castle would be met with a wide expanse of shallow water known as the North and East Cars. 
between Sutton and Swan was Brand's home, described as a cultivated island, according to Blasill, at the time of the Northern Conquest. It was originally a part of Swine, but later became attached to the parish of Sutton. It is not surprising that many communities were found on high ground. Sutton stands on a high ridge of ground which linked it to Warne. Elsewhere, Bransbert and Sprotley Bearstwick were also on slightly elevated ground to protect from flooding. Other than Beverley, no other towns existed until the 12th century when William Le Gros founded Hedden in 1138, and later still when Edward I purchased Wyke from the monks of Mewes Abbey, renaming it Kingston upon Hull at the end of the 13th century. In a landscape largely covered in water, prone to frequent flooding, the hillock on which Castle Hill once stood may have afforded protection and been inhabited by one means or another over the last 2,000 years. However, being largely marsh and susceptible to flooding, Holdness lacked any stone and even timber. The early buildings at Mules Abbey were said to have been made out of wood given to the monastery. Later, the abbey, just a couple of miles from Castle Hill, would import their building materials from further afield, quarried from Newbold and Tadcaster. Mud had provided much of the building material. As late as the 19th century, mud continued to be used to build cottages. This lack of building material does bring into question the type of castle Brand's home was. Like many early castles, Brand's home castle would have been built largely of wood. Stone castles were expensive and largely the preserve of the leet, usually the king and the highest magnates of the land. Therefore stone castles were the exception, not the rule before the mid 13th century. The stone tower at York, Clifford's castle, wasn't started until 1245. The East Riding's largest castle, Skipsey, was a wooden Mott and Bailey design until its abandonment in 1221. Therefore Bransome Castle would have started life as a wooden fortification and had it been continuously occupied, would have remained so for at least the next century. As already discussed, its location on slightly elevated ground described as a hillock, it may be that this hillock was adapted to create a Mott and Bailey type design we see remnants of today. Perhaps the answer to its initial construction could lay in one of England's great periods of castle building, the Anarchy. The Anarchy was a period which describes the succession crisis after the death of Henry I. Henry's nephew, Stephen, claimed Henry had promised him the throne. His daughter, Matilda, believed otherwise. The result was civil war and a massive period of castle building across England as both sides slid into inevitable conflict. As the whole country was caught up in the conflict, perhaps the hillock, surrounded by marshes and mears, would have provided a strong natural defensive position, affording protection to its lord at a time of unrest or uncertainty. Say the first of Sutton was said to have been living around 1156. This puts him in or around the time of the anarchy and the period of great illicit castle building. He married Edith, the sister of his overlord, William, Count of Amal. The then Lord of Holdness. William fought alongside King Stephen during the conflict with Matilda. It is reasonable therefore to suggest that Sayer may have built himself a stronghold in support of his overlord William. It was said that during the anarchy the land was filled with castles full of devils and wicked men and men said openly that Christ and his saints slept. Therefore it's plausible that Bransome Castle was built in response to the succession crisis of the 12th century. As with many castles built during this period, almost all met a swift end once Matilda's son, Henry II, came to the throne. It was under Henry that royal authority was re-established and many of the castles built during the anarchy were ordered to be destroyed. Scarborough Castle was one such castle. Built by William Count of Umal, the castle was destroyed on the orders of Henry. Could Bransome Castle, built without royal authority, also have been destroyed on Henry's orders? There is perhaps another explanation for a castle on the site of Castle Hill. It is plausible to assume that the castle on the site predates that of even Say the First himself. After the Norman conquest in 1066, castle building grew tenfold. Holdness was granted by William the Conqueror to a Flemish associate, Drogo. Drogo built himself a castle at Skipsey, the seat of his Holdness lordship. To stamp his authority, Drogo would have given his followers parcels of land within his lordship. And like Drogo, they too constructed castles. 
Between 1066 and 1067, more than 500 castles were built across the country. Various factors influenced choice of the site. Defence was the obvious factor with many castles dominating a commanding view or built with strategic importance. Castles also provided access to lands from which an income was derived. Added to this, the Anglo-Saxon and Scandinavian settlers were hostile to the Normans. The Vikings, for example, were still making their presence felt throughout much of William the Conqueror's reign. Castles were therefore vital in securing William's newly won kingdom. The Normans also had a tendency to use existing sites to build their castles. Pevensey Castle was an old Roman fort converted by William upon his landing at Hastings. The mound upon which Skipsey Castle was built dates from the Iron Age. With Roman coins found in the vicinity of Castle Hill, could a castle have been built on a previous defensive fortification, perhaps a small Roman station? It may be that the slightly elevated ground which makes up Castle Hill was reworked, possibly from a Roman defensive station and incorporated into a Motton Bailey castle. The vast majority of English and Welsh castles from this period were established on low land or valley sites. Even if not built in the immediate years after the Norman conquest, a castle may still have been built in the preceding years, with most castles built in England between 1066 and 1135. The castle at Albrecht on the Holdness coast was said to have been in existence by 1115. Say II, Lord of Sutton, is mentioned in 1216 as the King's Bailiff on the port of the River Hull. Sayers Creek at Drapool, now the outflow of the River Hull into the Humber, took its name from him. Sayers' lands extended northwards and included land between Bransome and Fairholme. Sayer appears to have been a thorn in the side with his monastic neighbours at Mews Abbey. Say the second comes across as an individual not to be messed with. He not only violently removed monks whose lands occupied the West Marsh, a series of disputes with Say the Second also occupy space in the Mews Chronicle. Also being the king's bailiff on the River Hull, he used his authority and on at least one occasion ordered his men to seize contents of a vessel, even if it meant killing the crew. Interestingly, the Mules Chronicle fails to mention a castle. It has been suggested that Say the Second did not live at Castle Hill and in fact lived at Stone Ferry in which he had more control over the River Hull, being the king's bailiff at the time. If correct, this may suggest that the castle at Bransome or the site itself was no longer in use, or that it was used as a retreat in times of trouble. The earliest documentary evidence referring directly to Bransome Castle is in 1353, when Sir John de Sutton, the younger, was fined for adding battlements and defensive features without a license. Sir John is an interesting character. He fought in the Hundred Years' War. He was knighted, and like many others during the Hundred Years' War, it is possible that Sir John returned a wealthy man. Indeed, the 1340s was a time when things were going rather well for the English. The English had defeated the French army at Cressy in 1346 and captured Calais in 1347, in which Sir John was present himself. With his newly acquired wealth, what would a 14th century knight decide to do? Build, extend or make improvements to the family home or castle. Sir John was responsible for the improvements made at the nearby church of St James at Sutton, by no means a cheap job itself. Sir John was a son of Sir John de Sutton the Elder, a descendant of Sayer the First. Sir John had argued that his castle at Bransome was to defend the port of Hull from the king's enemies. That said, any building work carried out by Sir John included defensive works, which would have probably been more to do with his status than that of defence. Despite Sir John arguing that he'd simply built a house, the King's Justices saw the wise and said that Sir John had built a fortlet, which was to the disturbance or threat to the arrival at the port of Hull. There was perhaps certainly a cause of concern among the authorities because of Sir John. Sir John had a gripe with the authorities. The ferry at Drypool, which had been in the Sutton family since the time of Say the Second, was taken into the King's hands, thus denying Sir John one of his means of an income. In fact, previous members of the Sutton family were somewhat a thorn in the side of the authorities. On the opposite side of the River Hull at Drypool, Say the Second built himself a fort, much to the concern of the authorities who saw Say the Second as a threat to trade and river traffic at the time. 
the fort was subsequently destroyed. Castle building had, however, drastically moved on since Sayed the Sutton's possible earlier foundation. Many castles were becoming pretty much useless with the introduction of gunpowder and early cannon from the 14th century. It was now much easier to breach castle walls. Because of this, castles had now become more of a status symbol rather than structures of defence. We find further references to Bransholm Castle after the death of Sir John. Elana, the widow of Sir John at the time of her death, had one dwelling house and outbuildings, 59 acres of tillage, 105 acres of meadow and 222 acres of pasturing swine, in which the castle of Bransholm is situated. The castle passed to Sir John's brother, Thomas de Sutton. The castle later passed to one of Thomas's daughters, who married Peter de Morley. Additional references to Bransholm Castle or its site appear in the 17th century. However, it appears any structure may have largely since ceased to exist. A Robert Langdale leased a sixth part of the pasture called Castle Hill, while 30 years later, John Dalton leased the same sixth part and ring near a common pasture called Bransholm. By the time we get into the 19th century, it appears any building that once existed had long since gone. An engraving of Castle Hill depicts a large number of rather tall trees on the site of Castle Hill, suggesting that any building which had stood had long since disappeared. Unfortunately, no images exist of Bransholm Castle. It is almost certain that any early castle on the site was incorporated into a modern Bailey design and was built of timber. It is later we are unable to say for certain whether the castle at Bransholm was a castle in the sense of what we perceive a castle to be, or whether it was in fact some kind of fortified manor house within the original Motton Bailey earthwork complex. The latter would be perhaps the more plausible explanation, certainly by the time of Sir John de Sutton during the first half of the 14th century. Indeed, looking at Castle Hill today, it appears there was no grand medieval castle surrounded by a great moat complete with drawbridge and turrets. Any wooden structure from the time of Say the First or before has long since rotted away. Say the Second may have used the site as a residence, but we lack any documentary evidence to confirm this, with suggestions that Sayer's primary residence may have actually been in stone ferry to control access along the River Hull. As for Sir John de Sutton, we know Bransholm Castle existed during his lordship, possibly an upgrade on the family home, partly paid for by the spoils of war. Any defences added by Sir John may not necessarily mean great battlements or great thick stone walls with arrow loops. These may have been largely decorative rather than for the purpose of defence, as castle and siege technology had moved on massively by the 14th century. Also being marshland, Castle Hill itself being gravel and sand, it may have been unsuitable for any substantial foundations to support such a theory of a great castle as we think of today. Bransholm Castle may have developed from a Motton Bailey perhaps to a private 45 residence in its later years, perhaps similar to that of Paul Holm Tower. Sir John also argued he built a house rather than a castle, and while perhaps correct, it is perhaps plausible there was some sinister motive behind adding these defences. We do know that Hull had its own brickworks, and during the time of Sir John de Sutton, the town was firing bricks for the building of its town walls. Bricks for such a construction may have been fired at Hull, then the network of dikes and waterways used to convey the building material to the site of Castle Hill. Indeed, much of the stone from Mews Abbey used in the construction of Hull's castle and blockhouses on the eastern side of the River Hull in the 16th century would have been transporting using the area's network of dikes and waterways. For all its mystery, Castle Hill is almost certainly the site of Bransholm Castle, but as yet the site is yet to reveal its full history. A more detailed excavation is needed to unlock more of Bransholm Castle's secrets. We hope you found the talk informative and interesting, and don't forget to look out for up-and-coming talks in the near future on the Hull History Centre's YouTube channel.